always represents the Holy Spirit. So again, the omega-3 is God's Holy Spirit. I want to be very clear. Only way you can get the anointing is from his Holy Spirit. Spirit. When Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist and the Bible said he came up from the water, the Bible says, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. So the Holy Spirit was on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this is where I want to pick it up on this Omega-3 series. My question to you this morning is, what's your net worth? What's your net worth? And we're going somewhere with this. What's your net worth? For those who, for those who don't know what net worth is, net worth is taking all your assets minus all your liabilities, all the debt that you owe, and whatever's left, that's what your net worth is. So you can take all the money in the bank, uh, your 401K, your retirement plan, the car you own, the house, the clothes, everything you got, and then subtract everything you owe. And whatever's left, that's what your net worth is. So it doesn't matter if you're Michael Jordan, Oprah Winfrey, Bill Gates, uh, 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 Warren Buffett. It doesn't matter who you are. What's your net worth? Take your assets minus your liabilities. But we're going to have a fancy twist to it this morning regarding your net worth. Go with me to Luke chapter 5. Luke 5. What's your net worth? What's your net worth? Luke 5. Got a few minutes with you. Luke chapter 5. Jesus had the omega-3, the anointing of the Father, his spirit upon him. He said, for the spirit of the Lord was put upon me to preach the gospel. So Jesus had the omega-3. So when you come and give your life to Christ, now you become part of the body. Now when you come to part of the body, the only way you can operate is you need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You need the power of the omega-3. You got me? All right, let's go. Uh, Luke chapter 5. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. And when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. We'll pick up. Let's go back to verse two. And he saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them. Fishermen. Remember, he told the disciples, follow me and I'll make you what? Fishermen of men. I figured out of all the professions, why did he pick fishermen? Out of all the professions. Why he didn't pick lawyers? Why he didn't pick doctors? Why he didn't pick politicians? Why he didn't pick those people out of all the professionals out there? Why did he pick fishermen? I went back and found several traits of why he picked a fisherman. Write these down, these fishermen traits. One, fishermen is courageous and daring. Fishermen are courageous and and daring. Why? I'm not talking about sitting on the dock of the bay watching time go away. I'm not talking about that fishing. I'm talking about on them big old ships, them big boats, and they out there in the oceans and the seas and the rivers and waves are tossing and turning. They are courageous at the end of the day because why? At the end of the day, they go through violent storms. They go through violent storms. When the winds and the waves are tossing that boat backwards and forwards and water is overtaking them. And yet they get up again the next morning and do it again. Now, who more courageous than them? Really? Now, understand the water that you'll ever see in the Bible, whether it's a lake, whether it's a sea, whether it's an ocean, whether it's a river, all water represents is life. Life. Because why? Even when you get baptized, he's baptizing you in the what? Water. Taken from the old life and bringing you where? To what? A new life. It's water. The whole time you were an embryo in your mama's belly where you were sitting in a sack of what? Water. It's crazy because you were breathing in. But you were breathing in because you were hooked up to somebody else. Some of you can't breathe now because you ain't hooked up to somebody else. Water shouldn't bother you. We got people that can swim through water like a fish. Look at your neighbor and say, are you hooked up? 
You say, I just feel like life is overtaking me. Sure, you're drowning. You're drowning in troubles. You're drowning in problems. You even drowning in debt because you ain't hooked up. See, when I'm tired, I'm hooked up. You can fill a tub up. I'm fine. I'm breathing out of water. You call me Aquaman. I'm good. But for y'all who ain't hooked up and ain't doing right, <laughs> right, you're drowning. And I can't see no way to get out because you're not hooked up. Do you know that people drown? Victims do not drown because they can't swim. They drown because they panic. Here's why they panic, because they know they ain't hooked up. Look at your neighbor and say, I got the hook up. Now, for those who don't, y'all better start hooking up today. Doing what's right. Hook up. I said hook up, not shack up. I'm going to move on. I felt something. Right. I'm going to move on. That's not the hookup I was talking about. I'm talking about hooking up with the Omega 3, with the Lord. One, they're courageous and daring because they're able to go through life, through the violent storms. Two, they are patient and determined. Anybody here ever went fishing? You got to be patient. You could be out there, what? All day and catch what? Nothing. Patient. That's why I'm thinking he picked fishermen. People are like, you understand. My husband get on my nerve. My wife get on. You ain't no fisherman. And think about that. My husband, my wife get on my nerve. Well, you the one caught him. <laughs> Clearly, you had some other jokers and you throwed them back. You decided to real this one. I don't up in now. Be patient. Old man told me years ago, the young boy, he would tell me about relationships and marriages. He said, look at here, son. And remember this. He said, you can't clean a fish until you catch him. Now that you caught him, clean him. You got to clean him. That means change him to what you want him to be now. Change him to what you want to be. That was what Christ is doing to us. We've said it all the time. What? I might not be what I ought to be, but thank God I ain't what I what? Look at your neighbor and say, he cleaning you, child. He cleaning you. You are so much better. And you're going to be better tomorrow if he allows you to live. He's cleaning you. Ephesians says at the end of the day that the, that the church is the woman. She's the bride. And he's cleaning her with what? His word. That she shall one day be presented without a what? A spot, a wrinkle, or a blemish. He's going to present her to himself. He's going to make the woman he always wanted. She ain't that yet. But she showed up better than what she was. He cleaning me. He cleaning me. Third thing, teamwork. Fishermen never go out by themselves. I'm not talking about sitting in the ditch on the side of the bridge. You can go that by yourself. But when you're really going to fish, you better take somebody with you. Teamwork is better. Here's why. Because it don't take long. And when you're out there by yourself, you say, ain't like anything going to happen today. I'm going to take it in. But when you got somebody else out there, it's something about when you got somebody, you don't quit as early as you would. Am I right about it? You just won't quit. We going in already? Well, we'll stay a little longer. Right. You won't quit on them. You don't quit on me now. Here's why. Because they too have what? Sacrifice. That's the fourth thing I found that fishermen do. They sacrifice. You say, how do they sacrifice, Pastor? Think about it. Think about it. They got to get up early. That's sacrifice. They got to go ahead and buy their own bait. Sacrifice. They got to pay for their license. Sacrifice. See, not, nothing what they do is free. You got to pay for it. That's what I found out again a lot of times with Christians in church. They don't want to pay for it first. They want it now, and then I'll pay for it. Now, you pay for it. Then you get it. You get nothing in this book. You get nothing in this life without sacrifice. Sacrifice. When you're tithing, you're what? Sacrifice. Oh, it cuts it. You're bleeding. <laughs> you bleeding, it hurts, but it's supposed to. It's supposed to. You're putting in, so you have a right to get out. The last thing they have, they have faith and belief. Think about it. They ain't going to no job where I'm going to get paid from 8 to 5. They going to a place that they can't even see, and they believing something will be there when they get there. If that ain't faith, I don't know what is. I'm getting up early. I'm driving. I'm doing all this stuff and believing it's going to be there. 
They got faith. So I see why he picked fishermen. That's why he called us fishermen. Fish. That's what he wants us to do is go out and fish. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. I thought about that. Why were they washing their nets? I thought they just, you know, pick it up, take it on in, boys, and take it on. We'll come back tomorrow. No, they got to wash their nets. Now, you understand where I'm going here, ladies and gentlemen? The net is what they caught the fish in. Without the net, there is no fish. So I ask you now, what is your net worth? We're going somewhere here. They got a boat, but they need the net. The net is what catch the fish. The fish don't catch the boat. The, fi- the boat don't catch the fish. The net catch the fish. The net is attached to the boat. Watch this. They're washing their nets. I found six reasons why they wash their nets. Might want to write these down. And they do it daily, systematically, to where they develop a habit. They do it daily, systematically, so they develop a habit. And I want you to hear it. One, the reason they wash their nets, it removes weeds and sand. Remember now, if they're dropping their net and the boat is now dragging the net, it, I mean, it drags so low it picks up all the weeds and the sand at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> Let me clue you in on something real quick. The net is your mind. Sometimes you can drag it so low, you're going to pick up all types of weed and sand. Are you with me? Now, for those who don't know, and all my young folks, you don't plant weeds. Weeds just pop up. That's all them negative thoughts. And sometimes you ain't doing nothing, just sit around the house. It don't take much for a weed to pop up. You could be in a grocery store and see somebody. It don't take much for a weed to pop up. <laughs> the weeds are your negative thoughts that just pop up. Research says we have over 20,000 thoughts a day. Just random stuff. Just all over the place. Also, we found out the more junk we watch, the more bad thoughts we get. Look at your neighbor and say, clean your net. <laughs> Clean your net. Girl, what, what's going on? What you doing? What is that? See, there ain't number weeds. <laughs> all, all on Facebook, looking at all that crap, all that junk, this, that, and other. Ain't nothing but no more weeds. Clean your nets. The negative thoughts. Plus, I thought about it, not just being a fisherman, how they catch weeds, but also being a farmer. Do you know that a farmer, when they plant good seed, there's always still going to be some what? Weeds pop up. But I thought about it real quick. And the researchers said, the professional says, the best time to pull up weeds is as soon as you see them. Why? Because if you leave them long enough, they'll grow roots. And it's hard to get them up. Once you pull them up, they'll start pulling other stuff up. So the best time to pull them up is as soon as you see them. So I found out the best time to pull up weeds is as soon as you get on your knees. I'd be trying to pray sometime, but that's why you stick all them weeds. The quicker you get on your knees, the quicker you pull up all them weeds. Watch this. The second reason why they wash their nets. They make repairs to torn lines. Remember now, as you're pulling it, sometimes it's rocks down there, old tree limb down there, so you get caught, and it tears the lines. It tears the lines. I'm going to say it again. It tears the lines, the lines in the net. The torn lines, at the end of the day, I went back and researched, is no more than your mistakes and faults. They washed and cleaned their nets. They washed their nets to repair torn lines. It don't take much to fix your net. Remember, I told you, your net is your mind. 
Some of us don't have a clear mind because we have not repaired our net. Some folks you hate to see because you hadn't repaired it yet. They're torn lines. It don't take much to say I'm sorry. It don't take much to say I didn't mean it. Hey, uh, forgive me or I forgive you. Repair those torn lines. You say, where do you get the lines from? That's why they're called lines of communication. It's torn. Repair them. I can't think good because I still got some lines that's torn. I'm sorry, mama. I'm sorry, daddy. I'm sorry, brother. I'm sorry, honey. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Repair those torn lines. That's what they're doing. They're fixing it, washing the lesson. They're repairing it. I don't care no more. Well, see, that's a torn line right there. It's a torn line. And you don't want to be in a relationship with anybody who don't care no more. When people tell you that, oh, I'm done. I don't care. That's a torn line. You better fix it quick. Are you with me? I'm telling you why he picked them. Three. The reason they wash their nets. To extract decay. You see, what decay? When they also pull their, their nets, they're picking up dead fish. They're picking up, if you have been on vacation, you might have been to, been to, been to Mexico and uh, Aruba and Costa Rica and all those nice Bahamas and all those. They have what's called up seaweeds everywhere. All that's just, they're picking up all that. Now, the decay, of, the decay is dead fish. When you get dead fish and you get seaweeds, they start to stick to the boat. And they cause the boat to stink. Watch this. So the reason they clean and wash their nets is in their mind, they got to let go of all the dead fish. All the old relationships, get rid of it. All the things in your past, cut it loose. You can't bring the dead with you. It will be a stinky situation. I don't want to talk about it. Look at your neighbor and say, it stinks. Yeah, yeah, wait, I don't want to talk about it. That was my past. It still stinks, because why? You are still dragging it along. Teddy P say, I think I better let it go. Just let it go. Don't bring your past with you. Now, if you're cleaning your net, clean your net. Let go of that stuff. Don't bring that dead stuff. All dead stuff stinks. Me and Johnny, we ain't, we ain't together no more. That's dead. And call it. It's over. <laughs> really, call it. We try to resuscitate it. We try to CPR it. It's dead. Call it. 1052. <laughs> they do, don't they? You seen the medical show? They call it. 1052. It's over. <laughs> don't go back and get something that you declared what? It's going to stink. And your family going to be confused. Like, I thought that was dead. What are you? <laughs> I'm being honest. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Which tells me this too. Make sure you clear when you call it. Don't bring your past with you. Let it go. Another reason why they clean their nets. The cord that's connected will rot. And it will weaken the net, causing it to be unreliable, ineffective, and useless. I'm going to say it again. The cord will rot and weaken the net, your mind, causing it to be unreliable, ineffective, and useless. The cord. The cord is a connection. Make sure you are not connected to the wrong people. This stuff is real. It will cause the net to rot because it's connected to something else. Make sure you're not hooked up to the wrong people. Clean your net. Five. It will also cause frustration if you don't clean your net. You say frustration. Watch this. The net is meant to be cleaned and transparent. David said, Lord, give me a clean heart and a renewed what? Mind and spirit. He's talking about a net. Put this down. Well, I'll give you more detail next week. If the net is the mind, the fish is the thoughts. He said, give, created me a clean heart, a renewed mind and spirit. I want to start thinking good thoughts. 
but I can't because I have not washed my net. I got to rip myself of all of these bad thoughts, these negative thoughts that the, the I can't. It won't happen for me. It'll never happen. It's this. It's that. My net ain't clean. I'm still dragging these thoughts I had last week, last month, last year, five years, 10 years, 15 years. I'm still dragging it. It creates frustration. Why? The net is meant to be clean and transparent, invisible, easy to slide through the water of the sea of life. Debris will hinder the movement. So what that mean? Your mind has to be clear from all distractions. Long as we live in this life, there will be some things that will just happen. Got it. But don't let it distract you. Your net, your mind needs to be clear. The old folks, you say it like this. Make sure your mind is stead on Jesus. Right. Otherwise, you're going to get distractions. Distractions come. That's what debris is. When there's strong winds outside, you might find limbs and leaves all over the place blown right in front of your path. There's a distraction. Don't mean you can't get through it, but don't let it distract you. Make sure that your mind is clean and clear. And then six, the fish will be frightened. You say, what? The fish will be frightened. I told you, if your mind is the net, then the fish is the good thoughts and ideas. Watch this. If the fish is the good thoughts and ideas, watch this. They can see a dirty net a mile away, child. They can see a dirty net a mile away. And, was, and, and at the end of the day, that it would be difficult for the fish to come into your net. Watch this. Why do you think the fishermen were fishing at night? So the fish can't see it. You got to say what's going on here. They're fishing at night because the fish can see in the daytime if that net is clean or not. At night is when you post to relax so you can get some good fish. Am I talking to anybody? He said, make sure you clean your net so you can get a catch. We'll talk next week that the boy said, I've taught all night and I ain't caught nothing. In other words, I've been thinking of a new way to do something. I can't think of it. I'm trying to figure out a way how I'm going to get out of this. How I'm going to get out of that. How I'm going to get out of debt. How I'm going to finally get a house. How I'm going to get back to school. I can't think of nothing. Why? Because I got too much stuff on my net. Look at your neighbor and say, let it go. See, unless you let it go, nothing can come in it. It's almost like uploading your home or uh, office PC computer. When you send an open loop file, it says it won't take it. Why? You still got too much old files on the system. You got to clean your net. You got to clean your files. So therefore, you can upload some new stuff. Lord, I need some new ideas. I, I need a new way of doing things. He said, I can't until you clean your net. You ever notice when you just let go? I'm talking to somebody. All right, Lord. I ain't going to worry about it no more. I'm going to put it in your hand. Da, da, da. You know when you let it go, it just show up. You say, what, what happened? Look at your neighbor and say, you cleaned your net. The Bible says, cast your cares upon the Lord for he cares for you. The reason you are casting them so you can make way for your net. The net works. The net works. But I want to know who's in your network. See, I'm talking prior now. You, you got to get on the network. Anything I want to know, I can hop on that internet right now, on the network. Oh, you know, we get frustrated when we can't get on the network. What is I to do? My phone ain't working. Something wrong. Well, that's how it is with your prayer life. When's the last time you got on the network? Because the net still works. <laughs> prayer is nothing you do when you want something. It's just a way of life. It's to keep your net open so all these great things keep coming to you. People who got it going on go through the same river, sea of life. 
What's the difference? They are using their net. <laughs> Girl, it look like nothing bothers you. It does, but she cleans her nets. <laughs> I used to be like you too, and then God gave me an idea. I used to be like you too, and then I got with homeboy and blah, blah, blah. I used to be like you too, and blah, blah, blah. Somebody's saying right now, I need to wash my net. As soon as I get up out of here, I need to wash my net. I need to wash my net. Washing your net is letting go of those things that cluttered you had in your life. Those things you're worrying about all day, every day. You can't get a new one in there. No fish is going to come into your net until you let that old stuff go. All that dead fish, all, 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 all that seaweed, all that stuff you done picked up along the way. Let it go. Call it. Call it. Cast your cares up on him. Cast them on him. The fish are already there. They just can't come into your net. When am I going to get a blessing in my life? When am I going to catch a catch? <laughs> you clear. You closer than you think. You need to unclean your net. And God give you the ideas, the inventions, the connections to everything you need. It's already there. It already exists. The fish was already there. He just couldn't see it. Lord, I can't see how you're going to get me out. God said, just clean your net, baby. Wash your nets. Wash your heart. Wash your mind. And I'll make sure the fish come your way. Amen. Can we give the Lord a big hand clap of praise, if you will?